Welcome to the French Tech Podcast. We're still here at Hello Tomorrow, a fantastic deep tech conference here at the regional version in Singapore in the beautiful Capital Theater. I'm here with my new two guests, Larry and Natasha. Hi, welcome. Uh, hi. To start off, could I ask you both to quickly introduce yourself, starting with you, Larry. Uh, hi, I'm Larry Weiss. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Persona Bio. And our interest is uh, in restoring health. To do that, we actually need to understand what health is. What we're learning with the microbiome is, unfortunately, none of us are healthy. We have lost a lot of diversity, not just taxonomic diversity, but genetic and metabolic diversity. And these were things that gave us, for lack of a better term, resilience, our ability to mm -hmm. respond to stress. So we live in an age of epidemic inflammatory disease, whereas most of our efforts are looked at fixing broken stuff we're interested in what it looked like before it was broken and how it is we get back to that state so that we're more resilient and we see less inflammatory disease. That's fantastic. None of us are healthy. That's a very powerful statement. We'll get into that in a little bit. Could I ask you to introduce yourself quickly, Natasha? Yeah, hi, I'm Natasha Ng. I'm one of the co-founders of Biome Oxford. So we are an early stage uh, startup company that's based out of the UK. And we're developing a medical device that essentially samples your gut microbiome. And we're doing this because we believe that the current sampling tools are insufficient. So they're either too expensive or not accurate enough and not suitable for large scale adoption for studying gut microbiome um, um, associations. So we are trying to come up with an innovative solution to solve this problem. And we've seen a great amount of interest in being able to more accurately sample specific regions within your gastrointestinal tract to come up with better and more robust disease associations and to apply this in both the research and healthcare settings. Wow, there's a lot of stuff that we could get into there before we do that. So you both work in with the microbiome. Uh, a little bit in different ways. You look at the gut microbiome, so inside the body. You're work focusing more on outside of the body, right? Yep. Um, but not everyone listening to this show might know what the microbiome is. Could I ask you to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. So the way we define the gut microbiome, which collectively just means the trillions of microorganisms that can be found in your gut, which can be the small intestine all the way up to the colon, to the rectum. So it is comprised mainly of different bacterial species, but we can also uh, encompass, for example, viruses, fungi, you know, even your own human cells, as well as the metabolites that are uh, secreted by these microorganisms. Right. So it's not just bacteria. Yeah, it's not just bacteria. Right. But, but most studies have been investigating just bacteria because that's the most sort of well-known um, you know, types of uh, organisms that are within the gut. So we've become, as a public, I would say, increasingly aware of the importance of the microbiome in health. And you referred to that earlier, Larry, when you implied that none of us are healthy today. Um, could I ask you to comment on that? Sure. So um, a couple of things. One is if we think about all the genetic and metabolic machinery that constitutes us, and I want to introduce a new word into the dialogue, which is a symbiome, which are all the organisms which are co-located and mm. co-evolving. By the way, the boundaries are not where you think they are. In fact, they don't exist at all. We are animals in a ancient and almost entirely microbial world. We didn't have the tools to see them, so we didn't know they were there. The only time we were aware of microbes, specifically bacteria, but others, is when things broke down. Oh, interesting. And we developed a germ theory of disease where it was the presence of some pathogenic bacteria that caused illness. I want to advance a larger, more comprehensive, and more dimensional germ theory of health, where it's actually the absence or an imbalance that causes us to lose resilience and predisposes us down the line to some of these last events. Think of if we were, you know the game Jenga? Yes. If we were a stack of Jenga blocks and all our genetic and metabolic machinery were in units of blocks, if there were 300 blocks, one of them would be human. Oh, wow. Okay. And we evolved as creatures of scarcity and we had no inflammatory disease and I can go into that further if you like. But as we developed agriculture, we domesticated animals, we started living in larger and larger settlements, we pulled blocks away and we cut our relationships with the microbial world and we lost, lost diversity. The tower still stands, but it's lost resilience. Today, what we see as disease is that last block or those last two blocks 
right before the tower calls out. But the hardest thing to find are things that you did not know that you lost because none of us have them. And compared to the set that Evolution gave us, our set is much smaller. And again, not just which organisms, but what are they doing there and how do they support our physiology? Very interesting. Could I ask you to quickly comment on how we can leverage those insights to deliver impactful and meaningful innovations to build a healthier future for everyone? Well, first we need to know what it looked like before it was broken. Mm. Okay. And there's maybe 25,000 humans left on the planet who have a full set, and they are endangered. So what we are doing is we are building not just a library of what they look like, but actually the biobank of an ancestral tribe of Yanomami Indians living deep in the, in the Amazon who still live a traditional lifestyle. And they will own their biobank. And what we will do is try to see, can we put those blocks back? How do we live in a modern world with the health that evolution and our biologic optimization gave us before our biology and our behavior diverged? It's certainly not an easy, easy challenge living in this world of abundance and constant temptation when it comes to foods. And that's exactly the right word. We evolved as creatures of scarcity, but today we live in a world of toxic abundance mm. where what's happened is things that were very scarce that we were, we, that we were hardwired to seek are now easy to get. We made the expensive and the precious inexpensive and cheap, and it's undermined our physiology. Could I ask you to complement those insights from your perspective, Natasha? Yeah, so I think Larry summarized the value of studying these microbial communities very well and the fact that we are dropping off actually in terms of our accurate knowledge mm. of these um, microbi uh, microbiome communities. So in our perspective, we're trying to um, supplement these uh, companies like his, as well as other companies who have this deep interest uh, in the microbiome. For us, obviously, we focus on the gut microbiome, and we believe that um, there are so many association studies out there now that associate the changes in the gut microbiome with uh, chronic diseases, inflammatory diseases, cancer, even recently Alzheimer's disease. And uh, so it highlights to us just how important uh, the microbial community within your gut is, whether it's a cause or a consequence mm. of disease. So we're trying to target the gap where we think that the current sampling methods for the microbiome is inaccurate because most of them are using a stool sampling um, away methods. And if you look at all the papers, they're probably all making use of you know, stool samples. Oh, interesting. So we believe that, I mean, in stool samples, you're probably not going to be able to capture the, the true diversity of the microbiome in your small intestines, in your right. upper colon, because the bacteria just doesn't survive in a stool in the same way. So we're trying to um, develop a solution that can actually um, target and sample the microbiome that is within specific regions of your gut, whether you're interested in small intestine or whether you're interested in the upper colon. And that's where we see our value com coming in for both the research communities as well as pharma companies or other private companies that are looking to um, um, identify what's the gut microbiome and see whether you can change it in different ways using drugs or pre and probiotics. Let me emphasize something on this. We are limited by the tools we have available mm. and the microbiome is a very early, so it's still incredibly early. And there's all sorts of bias in the way that we sample and then the way we extract mm. the DNA or RNA that we're sequencing. And these biases mean that our current data set is loaded with bias. In fact, one of the biggest problems is it's very difficult to compare a data set with another data set. It's very difficult to standardize these things even within a given lab. So having companies doing what Natasha is doing here and developing better mm -hmm. tools is the only way we move past this. I want to make a metaphor for you. Remember when your cell phone first had a camera? Mm -hmm. You could tell they were people, but you couldn't tell who they were. That's where we are today with this. Um, by the way, I don't think it's going to get simpler when we get better data. But if we don't have good sampling, and just because I'm working on the skin, we have a different set of problems, but similar degree of magnitude as we do with sampling the gut. The gut is particularly important because we're, we have an epidemic of uh, diabetes and metabolic syndrome, and a lot of that is taking place in the last third 
of the small intestine, mm. and we can't sample that. It is literally the dark side of the moon of our physiology. Mm. You can't sample it from below, and you certainly can't sample it from mm -hmm. above, and people don't really like the idea of doing that, so we have no data with which to start addressing these. Companies um, like BioMe and what they're doing in developing the tools, that allows us to extend our knowledge. But, again, I want to uh, finish with what I started, which is it's still really early. So it's still very, very early days. We need important innovations moving forward. We're only starting to realize the giant impact that the microbiome has on our health on in interaction with the foods that we eat. We live in a world of abundance, as you said earlier, Larry. And those are fascinating topics. We could talk about them for hours. And we're here, of course, at the conference at Hello Tomorrow, where there are many bright minds talking about the innovations that we need to move forward to building this better future. Are you excited to be here today? How's it going so far? Well, I'm extremely excited. So actually my company, we knew about Hello Tomorrow from the European version. And we uh, were very excited to see that they have a Singapore version now. And I'm here right now. And that's, um, it's hugely encouraging to see so many people here today. The main stage, the innovation stage, they're packed. There's so much interest and it just presents a, a, a great networking opportunity and just for uh, innovators like myself and other early stage startups to showcase their innovations. So it's it's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, this is the fourth of these conferences oh. I have been to over time. Um, I am really, um, one, excited, but also I'm a pathologically optimistic cynic. We have so many problems that we need to solve. And bringing young, and I've been doing this for a while, so you're all young to me. Bring young people together and getting them focused and optimistic about working on the really important problems that we absolutely need to solve is one of the things this conference does so well. And I encourage people to participate, come. You know, this is something that we all need as a society to spend more effort doing. Fantastic. And they do a great job. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to talk to us. Enjoy the rest of the day, and I hope this is going to be a great conference for you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.